my gewannen melonin, and well met indeed. I am Arake Kaladurathan, and welcome back to Divide and Conquer as we continue on as Darwinian. Our situation against Rune has, has gone well, and uh, their regions and their provinces fall into our hands, just as we hoped they would. Our money situation takes a little bit of a turn now that we have two armies yes, both lord. standing in the field. Your orders, my lord. But, rather unfortunately... Um, Rune is coming at us with some reinforcements and some troops that we were unaware of and it is going to be a few tough battles ahead in order to really shut them down. Captain Nayaka I is returning with all the you. garbage units that they had out in the west here that were trying to capture some of our lands. Um, so we're going to have to deal with him. And in the east, the very Lok Khan himself. Uh, sorry, only the Khan, not the Lok Khan. Uh, Uldor is coming for us, be much honor in defeating the you. faction heir, and he is bringing what he can from their capital of Mistrand. We did, however, hold Naburka, and if memory serves, we are sending oh, well, a I small will. army, yes we are, um, out Ships to ready. join Admiral Hamar, and they're going to head across to Ghazari Bar and take Winteri and Eor and begin sweeping down on Rune from the east. So we must hold here in the centre. At the moment, no way I'm yes, going to hold him on that bridge and let them come to me and uh, Viduha. We don't really have any option or any he's hope. He's gonna, he's just going to have to take the hit. But for now, we're ending the turn. So that is what we should go ahead and do. I do hope you enjoyed the developer diary that uh, went up yesterday. Um, it, I absolutely love a lot of the new changes for our Adonaim. Um and I must say that I do miss the Mongolian-themed Abrazanim units, but I think that the replacements aren't any sort of worse in how they look. They're just different. Um, but I can, I think we should have gotten rid of the sort of Mongolian-themed Ardenaim forces. I think it makes sense to have done that. Um, and if we just spare a brief moment to talk about how annoying Rune are. They're avoiding our army, and they are hitting us from around we must the cities. We are besieged. But first, we must once again defend Nabirka, and it's as if they're going to throw piecemeal troops at us, adding one unit each time until they outnumber us. So we've got some Daratai warriors coming, um, with a reasonably good attack and defence. Balkoth spearmen, not too concerned about. Spearmen are not very good against swordmen, so our general should have no trouble with the spearmen. And as we saw last time, the Ariolad Dragon Guard are a good unit with a six attack and a effective against armor. But unfortunately, because the Udomir is just oh, I can't show his stats, but because the Udomir is just so much better than them, uh, their armor piercing does not save them. But this time, we need to ensure our archers get used. Um, we are outnumbered, obviously, quite considerably, so we must use our archers this time. Last time, we had them actually fighting in melee, and this time, we do not want that. So there's our force. Hopefully, they're all going to come down this way. But it doesn't matter which way they're going to come, because we are going to move our men to just touch on the courtyard, and then have the archers stand back over here. Now, it is a bit of a gamble. Oh, just do what you're told. It is a bit of a risk because if the, our men get pushed back, then the, the, we might lose the square. And obviously, with that many men, I'm not sure we'll take it back in five minutes or however long we've got. Um, but it also will mean that our archers get a lot more use than they did before. So if you could all run. Perfect. And I'll stop. There we are. Right. Fire when you can fire. And away they go. Excellent. Right, you guys then, move forward. There we are, begin the fight. Right, our general's involved. Always disappointing. Let's keep it at time six. No, no. Keep firing, keep firing. Oh, it is as we feared. We'll charge the archers in when we've... Uh, when we've used up more of the arrows. Come on. You can fire better than that, surely. Look, fire right into the side of them here. It doesn't matter if we hit some of our own. Ah, oh, we are firing into the side. We'll wait till it gets down to about a minute or so. The enemy general lies. The enemy are badly bloody. The enemy general's they dead. The Odomir has absolutely slaughtered the bulk of those Belkoth spearmen. But it is the Dragon Guard that are making their way through there. 
Are you going to be able to use all your arrows? No, you're going to have to go for it now. Our battle seems to be yes! Yes! Foe, yes! <laughs> the honor there, you absolute vanquished. demon. You've done it again. Let all who remember this day, remember it as the day of our most glorious victory. This may not be our most glorious victory, narrator friend, but it certainly will go down as another in the, the feather of Theodomir's cap. Before this campaign is through, he will be remembered as one of Darwinian's finest sons. And I think we're going to have to rename the town after him now. Two excellent defences, and that one particularly good. Particularly because, obviously with the general always standing to the left of the uh, battalion, the, the regiment, the whatever you want to call it, he actually himself attacked and killed many of those Balkoth spearmen. He put his own life on the line in the defence of Darwinian, and that must be applauded, lauded, and celebrated. So we'll rename it in, on, in his honour. Uh, the only problem with being a Northman town is I always want to call everything Berg rather than Ost. Uh, in, in Sindarin, Ost is generally used. Ah, oh, can't stand with the Astari. That means they are going to turn on Rune, which might help us a little. Um, they're all in happy times. I've got to send an emissary to King of, of Rohan. And Gondor and Kand. See, that seems to be happening when... If Kand is sieging a Gondorian settlement when the... Orders. When the forced alliance occurs, it automatically then breaks their alliance against them, which is a bit disappointing. Um, where are we going to send a general? I, I can't remember. Yes, yes for out there, there he is. Boarding. Ah, in which case, you don't want to go into those ships. Your will, my lord. You want to... Oh, Karasan doesn't have free upkeep enough anyway, so it doesn't make any difference. But we'll keep you off of the ship in case the ship is attacked. But well done down here, Theodomir. Oh, we don't we didn't even lose a single archer, that's so good. We can't really get much to assist with, but we will rename it. To Theod Theod uh... Ah, let's call it Theoton. Um, and merge it with sort of English naming convention. Perfect. Right, now we've just got some unfortunate battles to fight. But fortunate, not unfortunate rather, fortunately, Captain Orash is a weak and pathetic little army. Yes, and Vidihar will be able to make no trouble of that. But Nayaka will be I the will big battle. So we must Your hit orders, my lord. Nayaka. We shall engage. Captain Erkenwin comes with us. And we'll control him. See, that's, if that was led by an actual general, that's a good army. That's a good unit. Everything that's in brown and, and silver is a good unit, and everything that's quite colourful is a poor unit. Um, and as you can see, there's a lot more brown and silver going on amongst that than, than there is colour. But Norway is a formidable leader. We've got two... Of, in support of him, we've got two of our finest generals as well. They don't even have a general. It's just going to be a slaughter for us. Uh, this week, by the way, I know that it isn't as popular as the others, but I'm going to plough on with playing Warhammer. But what I am going to do is, in anticipation of the new patch, uh, I am... In anticipation of the new patch, I think some of my mods will not work. But in addition, I've also found that actually SFO is not necessarily to my taste. And I would rather go back and play a proper game in vanilla before I dive into a, such a massive overhaul. Because I haven't really played vanilla... Total War Warhammer 2 enough to understand really um, to, to really feel areas that I think should be modded. So I've, I've not played it enough to work out where I think, oh, that sh could be different and that should be different. So I'm going to play vanilla. But also, I don't know if many of you have seen the people that enjoy Warhammer. The latest patch is going to reduce the turn times by a significant amount. Um, I think we're talking something like dropping from a minute and a half down to about uh, 20 to 30 seconds, which is an absolute game changer. And that's Mortal Empires, sorry. So that is an absolute game changer. And so uh, what I shall do is uh, begin a new campaign this week, because Marcus Wolfhart's campaign has gone rather easily, and um, we just aren't getting enough sort of diversity in, our, in who we're fighting against, uh, or indeed in uh, just the sort of the campaign in general. Um, so I'm going to play Mortal Empires and come back to the old world. Um, and I had made a list of the nations that I'd quite like to play. I considered putting it open to a faction vote, but then the chances are if I put every faction in the vote, you'd all choose a nation I don't want to play as. Um, and if I don't want to play as the nation, I never enjoy it, and uh, I will quickly 
cancel or quit the campaign. So I don't want to do that. Uh, we don't really want the crossbows in that. So we'll try and get them to flank. We are significantly outnumbered in terms of the uh, the number of enemy troops that are coming today. Right, so we'll try and get some units to flank around there on the edges. Uh, we attacked them, so they are going to retreat to this large hill in front of us, and uh, which I'm now just realising. Uh, so <laughs> we're not going to walk straight at them. We will sort of curl around. And there we are. Let's speed it up. The AI loves to stay on the hill, and they appreciate and understand the value of hills. But what they don't do is real learn or understand when you're circumventing the hill and just walking around it. Uh, they just do what you're seeing now, they just let you do it. They just stand on top of their hill saying, ah, well, we're on top of the hill already, what does it matter if he wants to walk over there? And then suddenly, dun 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 dun, you are then on top of the hill as well and they've lost their entire support and game plan and it, it turns into rather a doddle. But I don't think it'll be a doddle. We will, this army is going to slowly lose troops, uh, every one of these battles, we will win, but we're going to take casualties, and that's the problem. We can't afford to take that many casualties, because despite our money situation improving, we are still not that wealthy, and troops can't easily be replaced. The Byzantine-like army makes its way up the hill. Slow and steady wins this race, boys. But, so my plan for this week is to give you two Darwinian episodes as usual, and then two of whatever faction I've chosen to play Mortal Empires in the new, in Warhammer. Oh, hey, oh, they actually are changing. The first time in my life the AI is actually bothering to move. Don't get caught there, though. Let's, now we'll run a bit. Oh, we're getting shot. Get that to stop doing that so that they can run. No, 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 right, everyone now run to there. Go, 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 go. They're, they're sort of dancing with us and we've managed to push them off the top of the hill. <laughs> so they did sort of come for us, they sort of understood what we were doing and then um, just ran away. They're so desperate to be the defenders that, that they're just letting us claim the top of the hill. Right, let's come out of that. Form a line. Defensive units. Get out into the front line. Generals head over to there. Crossbows, you're not firing at will. Oh, their balusters are hitting us. Uh, we've got some units to head round onto the flank. Because their cavalry is moving onto that flank. Send the crossbows. Oh, we should send fourth wind that way because that's where the bulk of their cavalry is. But then isn't there a dragon guard unit down there? Yeah, there is. Really matter. Their Daratai hunters aren't even in battle and are already shaken. To give you an idea of how poor this enemy is. Right, all of you, move into better positions, please. Oh, that, look at that. Lined them up almost perfectly. Didn't even try. Alright, they have totally abandoned the hilltop. So we are just going to walk into them then in that case. So if you could all form a nice wall-like line. Run to there. And we will just send the archers on top of the hill then in that case. So we've curled completely around. Totally taken the hill. And now they're fleeing. Like, they can't run forever. I don't, <laughs> I don't understand it. Is their army almost entirely made up of archers? Is that why they're so willing to just bugger off? But now that we have the hill, and if we move our army around onto that, the front side of the hill, then... Ah, uh, where's fourth wind? You hit those dragon guards. Thorn Blazemen are going with you. As soon as we hit a unit, I think they will... They will pull around. Like, they will actually stop and try and fight back. What have we got down here? Dragon Guard and Daratai Hunters. Right, go for the Dragon Guard. You support. If you can, get those Dragon Guard over there. Dragon Guard. Dragon Riders, sorry. Get the Dragon Riders. 
Um, no one in defensive mode except for you, so that you can fire if need be. Come if on. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. Nice. The cavalry charged. Oh, into the Avari shadows, but they've regretted that and they're routing. Pull you back. Pull you guys in. Dragon Riders are going to get absolutely massacred. Fighting uphill against a spear unit. They just have no hope. Although they'll do relatively well as the Bladesman, I would have thought. Better than we would like them to do, anyway. How goes it on this side? We've got a lot of archers. I need you to really get involved. Really pick your targets well, men. But we've ended it uh, like uh, the AI. It's just. It's the only problem with Med 2, isn't it? I, it's just. The, the, the game is still absolutely stellar, and I thoroughly enjoy it, and it does many, many, many things well. But the battle AI is just never going to be that clever. And I see a lot of people absolutely bash on all the pretty much all the games from Rome 2 onwards about their battle AI being awful but I would say to these people just go back and play medieval for just one battle and you will see instantly how much better the battle AI is I don't understand where all this fervent hate for the battle AI for later games comes from when the earlier games battle AI is absolutely moronic no matter what you do to it it is absolutely idiotic it is so easy to kill because it's so stupid um and, but I, I don't think many people do come back and play Med 2 and aren't reminded and that the game has come on in leaps and bounds. And the, to be honest, actually, I'm a massive campaign fan. I, as I say all the time, I hugely prefer the campaign to the battle map. It has always been what I enjoy more and it's always what I look forward to. But in Warhammer, it is the complete reverse. Warhammer's battles are what are absolutely bloodied. pull me in. They I think they are such good fun. And I'm it makes me I'm happy to fight almost any of them because I just think they're so good. The the personally, I think the graphics it, the graphics, the animations, it's all been enhanced to such a degree you can really get behind the fight between each individual man. Obviously in Med 2 there are individual animations, but quite often they're out of sync and you'll be egging your man on against someone else and then he'll prod the air next to, like, and he'll be attacking this fellow for example, and then he'll prod the air somewhere down here and that's supposed to be a hit on him and it's just little things like that that break the immersion a bit every now and then. But also, of course, I think the battles in Warhammer have been hugely improved with the addition of giant monsters and uh, special abilities. The special abilities are a real game changer, if you ask me. And of course, the special abilities have been in it since Shogun 2, to be honest. Well, even in this game, we have special abilities. But in Med 2, there are always just things like improve your nation's fatigue or improve your combat ability. They're never direct effects. But then, of course, they're enhanced a little in Shogun and Rome, where you've got things like whistling arrows and fire arrows, uh, which actually do things more than just be look pretty. Uh, and then, of course, in Warhammer, there are spells. But that's why I just think Warhammer and Lord of the Rings are so close in how they could be represented. If you are stretching the lore to make a Lord of the Rings total war, then you would include things like a high elf faction having the ability to summon uh, like the floodwaters of the Bruin and or, or uh, Galadriel having some sort of I don't know like light based power where she can stun units around her or I mean Galadriel when um, the air red were riding south to assist Stuart oh I can't remember his name but when they fought um, Kyrian Stuart Kyrian when they fought in the battle that would ended up in the foundation of Rohan Galadriel assisted their riding south by covering the entire area around Lothlorien in fog so that they wouldn't be seen by the enemy as they rode south. Like, massive magical elven abilities absolutely exist in Middle-earth and they would be represented in a, a Total War style engine so well. I appreciate some of you may have certain individual gripes against the battle map and little things that bother you and annoy you, but I, I just don't think, given that the game I think is relatively reasonably priced and there's so much to offer, I don't think it's fair to just bash on one individual aspect of the battle map when in truth it has come on 
astronomically from what it started with, and I, that I, I just I think Creative Assembly deserve praise for, for what they've done. But I would absolutely love to see a Lord of the Rings Total War in the Warhammer engine. I just think it would work so well. Everything is already there. You, the trolls could be represented better. Um, the Muma kill would actually be so deadly. It would be amazing. Um, you would obviously have eagles flying around. You could possibly, at an absolute stretch, if you set it in an earlier era, not even a stretch actually, if you set it in an earlier era and did, say, the Silmarillion Total War or something like that, then you could have dragons flying around and they would actually work as intended. Oh, you've got to be joking me. You absolute bastards. <laughs> One unit of Balkoth Spearman is not fleeing. Ah, uh, no way. We should send no way. He's going to be quicker. Now, they should break as soon as they get hit, actually. The enemy yes, army. <laughs> this is a clear victory. Our support did something. 213, excellent. Now, that's not to say, of course, that you should hold games companies to account when they do make poor decisions. But so far, I don't think Creative Assembly has done all that bad. Now I appreciate with things like Rome where they broke off individual factions and sold them as as DLC. That isn't ideal, but in the current gaming world, um, it's just one of those things, isn't it? If everyone's doing it, why would they not do it, basically? But I think the tide is sort of turning. Microsoft are holding the beacon of no microtransactions high and are earning a lot of praise at the moment with the Age of Empires Definitive Editions. Um, Age of Empires 4 has already been said it's not going to have microtransactions and I've, I haven't played it yet but I've got the um, Halo Master Chief collection on Steam and I don't think that has microtransactions either. Um, so I think Microsoft are going to bring people yes, back no. around to the better way of thinking if you will. To battle. Uh, oh Rash you are definitely going to die. We've just slaughtered a far larger army of yours. Must and Vidihar is one of our finest men. generals as well. We march into battle. But I do absolutely long and I would love a Lord of the Rings Total War in Warhammer. But the, my only personal gripe against Warhammer is that they've put so much work into the battles, but then for some reason not into the battle maps. And that's the only thing I think is a little disappointing. I don't understand why they have gone backwards in how they do them because of course in Medieval 2 every single battle map is procedurally generated depending on where your nation is standing on the world map. So if you're standing on a hill the battle will be on a hill, if you're standing on a bridge it'll be on a bridge. Um, and Warhammer doesn't procedurally generate them. There are bridge battles, if you're on a bridge it'll be a bridge battle but otherwise it just rotates through a set pool of maps and um, they're very easy to, like I've played on the same map so many times in even just a short time that I've played on, played the game for YouTube. Uh, and so I think map variety is something they could definitely work on, but I m imagine there's some sort of reason, there there'll be a reason as to why. Um, like even if it's just time, like they didn't have enough time to create more maps or to make a system where it generates them from what you're standing on. Um, I can, I'll allow that. But then, of course, plenty of time has now passed. And I think I would prefer a few more, a bit more variety in the maps. Uh, the enemy seems to be charging us. And we are then not going to have very favourable odds if we get up into that, up near to that road. You guys are going to have to deal with the cavalry, but that's not a problem. You should be able to easily kill that cavalry. Right, um, so you two, the only thing you have got to fight is that cavalry over there, so... Ah, uh, it's because they're mostly archers, they're running into archer positions. Right, you guys, you are going to go for those generals. It looks like they are already backing off because we're getting into their... <laughs> getting close to them. I think they are. But they're going to hit them. No, curl up then. Curl up, curl up, curl up, curl up, curl up, curl up. Turn around. Stop, turn around. They've got those. Uh, 
If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. Oh, I have absolutely no doubt that we're going to. Oh, those are Raider cavalry. Oh, for God's sake. Right, you, go and kite them forever. We'll deal with those later. <laughs> Pull back the other units so we don't lose too many. Right, hit those Dragon Guard. You hit those. You hit those. You're going in. I've clicked too many times. You're running up that hill. No one is in defensive mode. We do have our own archers, but they just don't have anything to do because of the stupid cavalry over there. But we'll send the general whose name I don't know after them. Ah, oh, yes, you caught them. Perfect. That's the Daratai Hunter's Court. It's only going to be chasing the cavalry down then in that case. As we utterly surround the purple tide crashes against the dull brown smear that is Rune. Our general winds his way around. Now go over there and then turn back in. Right, let's speed it up. Good tidings. The enemy general lies dead. Routing. The enemy have just turned around and routed back they into our line. Right, so that's pretty much all of those dead. Those Daratai hunters will flee shortly. There we are. Nice and nicely done. Oh, the Candice Raiders came back. Oh, brilliant. No, stop running the and chasing them. The field. And catch the bloody down. horsemen. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Right, that'll do then. Excellent victory. Bored 241, victory, that's not too bad. Here today. Probably could have lost a little less, but... Uh... In terms of an actual matchup, um, our early tier units versus Rune's early tier units, Rune technically should win. The Dragon Guard, the uh, Aru lad, uh, they are good. They are better than our sort of Thorn Bladesmen and people like that. Solely because of their armor piercing, um, and that should stand them in very good stead. But I actually do enjoy fighting against Rune, to be honest. They, um, they've got an interesting and challenging early tier roster, and then if they survive long enough, which I think they probably will do, their late game roster as well presents unique challenges, um, with particularly with obviously their fire firing rangers, which can be a real pain. Right now, you guys are free to sort of go and raid places, so we'll start over there. Ah, oh, no way! We've been arm ambushed. Oh no, they didn't manage to get their ambush off. All right, we'll end. This about video will be slightly longer, but it's all right. It's Sunday morning. We'll end on us killing these stupid morons. But then what we will do is we will go and raid. We'll go and raid the towns, but we won't be able to actually hold them. To but the if upper hand in this battle. they're very, they're never going to matter to us because once we've defeated Rune, oh, I didn't even set up my army, idiot. Once we've defeated Rune, we won't care about Ravanian at all. I'm not hoping to go for Dolgaldor, as you all know. Once Rune is down, we're going for Dale because I'd like to show Dale's units in the game. It'd be interesting to see how Darwinian and Dale fight against each other, because of course it's a totally um, unrealistic matchup. Well, it's not really. I mean, they might have slighted us on a trade deal, and we've sent them several letters of claim, and maybe we've even issued a claim in the courts, and they've not turned up. And now we're just at the enforcement stage. They owe us thousands and thousands and thousands. So, we're gonna go to war. <laughs> Our crossbowmen are getting absolutely massacred by those Candish hunters. Like, I mean massacred. Goodness gracious. We've lost almost half of that army. But they're not paying attention. And a nice solid charge into their side always does a wonderful job. Good tidings. The enemy general lies dead. The enemy general's been ca killed. The crossbowmen are down. away please you guys move over to there right, speed her up go back in well done I'll pull out we'll just keep hitting the crossbowmen over and over and over I think the feat seems almost certain defeat is not certain come and hit these hunters 
pull out of the way. I don't think crossbowmen can fire while they move, which is our only real concern today. Come on, lads. Spears are out. And they got them into the side, but they're not actually killing that many in their charges. Although that one did a lot better than the last one. Go on. Yeah, they're routing. Only half the enemy force remains. Falkoth. Keep kiting those so our crossbows can get them, and you guys go and hit those Kandish Hunters. New guys for them. You go over and get those as well, please. The battle seems to be swinging. The hunters run routed. From such tidings does victory emerge. These mounted crossbowmen aren't actually all that good, are they? <laughs> but then I suppose their real advantage comes in a normal battle where they're a crossbow unit that can flank far easier than any other crossbow unit. Right, cease. The enemy army oh. flees the field. Pursue and run them down. Well, don't let them get away. Also, you do have to remember that Darwinian are not known at all for their um, cavalry. So, these cavalry units, they're not amazing. The enemy are but we did only lose... Vanquished. Oh, we lost half. I was going to say, we only lost 108. That's half. That's fully half. Of only the mightiest of generals. Everything you see here will stay except one crossbow unit which will heal 19 men. Otherwise, all those deaths will stand. What I did not realise was that our crossbow unit is incredibly weak to arrow fire. Dear, oh dear. We lost so many because of that. We should have just charged them in, to be honest, and used them as cavalry rather than crossbows. I think it would have worked a little better. Even when they've only got a sword out, they still take kills. The day is ours. And victory is ours. Well, you should still be able to go and raid then, so head off over there. You're still losing money, despite the number of troops lost. Right, Videha. We need to hit Rune where it hurts. Yes. Going to stand back on that bridge. So, Viduha, you are going off. With honor, go and see what you can see. Here, as you command. Yes. Right there. Oh, we're in enters. So we can't go through. Yes. All right. Well, that is going to be where I end this first episode. So do stay tuned for the rest of the week if you I mean, if you want to. Uh, there'll be a second Darwinian video, and then there will be two Warhammer videos for a nation I have yet to decide um, who I will be. I suppose I could do a faction vote of the four or five empires that I would actually play as and then you can all take a vote on that but of course if I did just a full faction vote you'd all vote for the Skaven or the Undead and I just would never play as them I can't stand them so <laughs> I would not play so but I could do one for the nations that I would play as I suppose but um, anyway that will be later in the week if it does come but for now that is everything so thank you very much for watching and until we speak again dear friends and farewell